Uh, so just to introduce Douglas, uh, Douglas is a researcher and senior lecturer at Glasgow Caledonian University. And he works in the field of Gallic media. He's the co-author and the author of numerous book chapters on the connection between Gallic arts and culture, as well as the economy. And uh, he's recently completed a report with his colleague Mike Danson, um, as well as a different report with his colleague Catherine Burton, who they all cooperated to on the prepare this for us today. Thank you very much. Uh, who's who's uh, Malky Gallic is also show business or both. Me horse in a honey show business, Rionic Hanum. But I'll, I'll do my best anyway uh, during the next. Um, uh, I'll put 20 minutes so that we can um, perhaps uh, attend for um, questions after. I'll do my best on this. Okay. Is it? Oh, it's not very good to read, is it? It's very small. Sorry, that's a mark of me as a lecturer. So many years, should never have done it so small. Um, the key key thing I would like to start by saying, however, is that the complexity of how societies and communities can grow is being more and more recognised. Um, and I want to talk in in this session about art and culture, similar to what. And Malky said about that. Um, essentially, um, one of the big problems, and I share uh, Malky's view on this, is that the contribution of art and culture to the vibrancy and the, the heart of a community is actually not given the um, importance that it deserves. Now, there being, I come from an economics background, unfortunately, um, in some ways. You know, I'm saying economists know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. But um, nevertheless, because there's so much argumentation about value for money, there have been quite a few studies, including ones that I've been involved in, looking at the benefit, the economic benefit of communities, but also of firms and companies using Gaelic as part of their um, their operation. And one of the um, studies which came out in 2015, uh, which was called Our Storis Gaelic, which HEI um, asked for, um, actually was able to show how much money was added to the economy. I mean, potentially, we, we were very conservative in, in keeping the numbers low because um, when people could tell you this as an economist, when people hire you to do economic impact studies, they want a big number, you know. But we said, no, it's got to be something you can actually justify. The figures we found, however, were that if uh, firms in Scotland and community organisations use Gallic to the full, it could provide between £82 million and £149 million. And within this, art and culture was at the core of how Gaelic was integrated into um, uh, social and business organisations. I've just finished the study of the economic impact of Gaelic in Glasgow for the, the City Council um, last uh, year, last December. We found that um, over 700 full-time equivalent jobs could be linked um, to Gaelic, generated about 21 million pounds within the uh, economy there. The biggest bit was education, as you might imagine, but tourism, creative industries, BBC Alba and uh, and the like were, were very important. Um, so essentially what we are arguing is that art and cult, you know, the the complexity of how a healthy society develops has been more and more recognised. Art and culture makes good business sense if you're talking to your accountant or your local politician, but it also makes incredible sense in terms of the vibrancy of the community. And I think the social study, our social study, fell down on that. It mentions art and culture twice, and it mentions the fashion one, the fashion once, uh, and that's to say that a certain one was in English, I think. But there's an area that needs developed for that, and I want to. We'll look at that a wee bit more. Now, art and cultures, obviously, the, the images that are um, provided for consumption by tourists, but also by us in Scotland, um, show the complexity of Scotland. It's not just 
uh, garlic. It's also, you know, they have the Scots heritage uh, and the in the north part, part of the north anyway, uh, the Norse heritage uh, and the like. And Sorley McLean talked about the the importance of garlic, I think, for understanding where we've come from in Scotland and potentially where we go in the future. So the the key question um, that I that I think he 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 posed where the communities were denied some of the richness that were was intrinsic in the communities. So the question for me is how do we recompense communities like the vernacular communities where the culture and the language has been uh, denied. So art and culture are absolutely key to that. Just a, a couple of wee points. My my colleague who couldn't make it, Mike Danson, has been looking at a lot at uh, community buyouts and sustainability and, and so on. Um, and how all the agendas are coming together. So a key one is how you can localize this and make sure that all the, the bits are done in an integral manner. A wee bit like the way Moki you were talking about joining the dots, you know, in all this um, sort of thing. And one of the concepts that they came up with, well, one of the, the buzzwords that are coming up uh, are uh, smart clachens, right? Smart clachens. You know, where you're getting everything working together, technology, art and culture, the language, uh, you know, business and so on, but taking into account the rural nature uh, of this and so on. So it's an area that I think there's a lot more can be done. And I think that listening to the panel uh, discussion um, earlier, I think there's a lot of detail that, that needs to be looked at. I think that was recognised. What are the details for, for going ahead um, locally? And I think this is concepts like that uh, can help. Just briefly on the um, ways that garlic can be used. This is the big study, Our Stores Garlic 2014. Um, we looked at three different ways that garlic was already used in different firms because we surveyed loads of firms and uh, a common equity and, and other community organisations and so on. Um, there are different ways uh, of, of doing it. Um, the first quote on the, the right hand side of the slide is from Willie Rowe when he was the, the chair of HIE, I think it was about 2008. And he talked about um, HIE needed to place more value on and invest in native language and cultural tra traditions of uh, the region, which would fortify um, what was uh, happening and so on. So we looked at the importance of the traditions for um, building uh, activity, you might say. I mentioned the, the Glasgow the Glasgow study, the Celt Celtic connections um, there, we worked out I thought you, we we surveyed everyone that went to Celtic Connections last year, and um, the figures: eighty-two percent of the attendees said they were aware of uh, uh, Gaelic events, and it was fairly or very important to them. So that's you know, there's only one point six percent of the population that speak Gaelic. You know, eighty-two percent of them that went to Celtic Connections, the, the Gaelic um, the Gaelic uh, question was very important, and we worked out that the different festivals in Glasgow, um, such as Celtic Connections, but not only that, there's, um, I think th th there's the Pipe Band Festival and so on. We worked out there was over um, £7 million, could be fairly, and we, we did it very conservatively, as we say, fairly attributed to the impact of Gaelic. So the question is, why is its role um, neglected? Now, when you look at the, Arts and cultural sector in the outer hymns. Look at us. Am I? I've just realised again. I'm standing right in front of this. It's a bit silly. Do you want me to move to the side? Would that be helpful? Thanks, it's, too small. it's all too small. Okay, sorry. Okay, we'll try and get that bit off the recording because it's bad for me as a lecturer. I so. Art and cultural sector in the hymns. Right. I did another study in 2012 about the 16 different areas that people are involved in it. We found that 3.5% of our Hebrides population work in arts and culture, maybe about 500 people. Now, this is 10 years ago, remember, so things have changed a wee bit. We were able to save possibly 33 million after all sorts of 
economic in, uh, impact and so on. Now, here's the problem for the for me trying to find out about the council. I went on the website. The agriculture does feature in the Gaelic language plan. It's under there's a section Gaelic in arts and heritage. The other Hebrides cultural strategy is mentioned, but it's disappeared. In 2015, it was revamped, and there was lots of good questions put, and I was able to follow that on the website. And uh, an arts and cultural forum was set up, not just in Stornoway, but down in use as well. The last mention of it is 2017. It's not any place on the, on the web. I've been in touch with four people in the council saying, it's here someplace, you know, talk to this person, we'll get back to you. And I wrote yesterday, I got an email yesterday, oh yes, here's someone who'll let you know. So I contacted them and said, look, I'm speaking about this tomorrow morning. It'd be nice if I had some good news, but unfortunately I haven't had it uh, yet, so I couldn't find it. So some of the things in the, the, the study, we found that when you look at what do you call art and culture, right? It's very big, isn't it? It's not the 16, uh, 16 areas of uh, the big hitters are the ones that make the money, such as the media. There's Harris Tweed. Now, that's an interesting one. Harris Tweed doesn't use Gaelic any place. Whereas malt whiskey, all, all the whiskies that are in Gaelic are malts, incidentally, in case you want to work your way through them uh, to help your vocabulary. Um, but so we looked at larger enterprises, we looked at uh, Keolis, we looked at Taishir Savag and so on. We found though that in general, it's dominated by um, small businesses as well. There's a lot of micro um, uh, traders and so on. And this goes on to things like artists who have come up from south of the border and so on. And uh, I'm looking here, but when we asked them, what's the role of garlic in it? And how important is Gaelic for art and culture here, right? Then obviously MG Alvin all said it's, it's core. But when you asked all the, the wee people that were making their their lifestyles on this, they said it varies. Some of them said very important, some said not really important. And a lot of them said if you look at Orkney, which doesn't have the language, they seem to get the cultural issue a lot better. So that's maybe a question we we said we need more. Um, research on this. I would say that as a researcher, but we need more research on this as well. Um, so, the role of art and culture then bringing people to Gaelic. M much of the work I've done over the past 20 years and other colleagues um, as well has shown that arts and culture is a window of the world bringing people together and so on. But if you look at this study, at the Solstice study, it, as I say, it doesn't mention art and culture. And it also suggests there's a, well, it notes there's a big generational problem in relation to teenagers and their use of, of garlic and also their interaction with art and culture. That's what the book is suggesting. But it's young people who are mostly involved in the fish and in the blast festivals in Phil and G and stuff like that. And that's a way to uh, hit the streets again for its 15th time. So I'm saying if the future is about young people, I don't think it features strongly enough in the source analysis and there's no link to art and culture. And I think this is something that needs worked on because people need convinced that there's a reason for them to to speak a language. You know, if it's just seen as a school thing that you do, then um, you won't do it. So um, what about the new generation? The List um, magazine, or online mostly now, recently looked at Scottish trad bands you need you need to see. And of the eight that they give, four of them were Gaelic. Ra Rachel uh, Newton, Nightworks, Manran, Braybach, uh, and so on. So there's, it's clearly recognised, and Celtic Connections recognise that. And in the, the Salsi book, it says, a certain generation will listen to the radio, watch BBC, Alaba, recognise culture, but they don't think it's happening. To young people. So my question is, how do we involve young people in it? And I think there are things that are um, happening. You hear some of the quotes, um, and I said that seeing things through younger people people's eyes is always a difficult thing to do. Um, the book mentions teenagers uh, responding to their parents in in English. I remember at Mocky, I was in the arts. I was the arts project officer. Uh, office at the time. This must have been 1996. I can't remember who was, somebody was working in the office and their son came in for lunch money. 
and um, your colleague spoke to him in Gaelic. He responded in English. She spoke in Gaelic. He responded in English. And the chat went on for ages. And then it was cheery, my hand, got the money. And I said, well, why did that happen? And the response I got was, what, what, why did what happen? This is Gaelic. And then it's, oh, is that what was happening? I never even noticed, you know. And the, the, what came out was that this was a generational thing and that she, um, it was believed that younger people would just, you know, later on, go back to it and so on. But there are bits in the book, 1995, saying that um, people don't, young people don't see what's on the media or it's perceived as being relating to them. And another study, 2014, uh, uh, someone called Grafman said that there's uh, trying to create loyalty through children's programs probably results in the opposite effect. Something associated with childhood is, an un is as uncool as everything that parents and grandparents do. That's us, you know. Um, so, how to how to break this through? I don't think it's as bleak as the, the study um, suggests. And one of the reasons I think it's more bleak in the study is that the school kids that were asked, the biggest single block of them were 16 year olds, you know, out of them. And those of us who have had 16 year olds, they don't do anything. No, don't let them not, wouldn't do that. No, not me. My mates would not let me do this. You know? So how much you can actually take from a survey of how much Gaelic that you you get involved in, I'm not sure how, how accurate it is. Um, Maurice Stewart points out, um, however, that outside school, there's a lot of social areas where people can, can where it's not the norm to, to speak Gaelic and so on. So maybe the the um, Kaikele that's, that's been planned for here and so on, uh, and in Inverness, the different hubs in Glasgow will be helpful. I want to finish by talking about where do you do find Gaelic? And I know Francois, and he's a very interesting talk, talked about social media as being worse than useless. But um, there are bits that young people are looking at. Maybe not all of us look at Maybe we do, actually. I think it would be bigger. Most people know this. But if you actually look at Instagram and TikTok, more and more, um, you've got people doing bilingual stuff, and it's quite normal. And I was able very quickly to identify how many is that? One, two, three. I think that's eight there. And I'll show you the sort of things that it's about. The first one. Uh, yeah, this last he talks about all sorts of sustainable things. Here's my, you know, here's what I'm wearing today and all that. What's important is 1,148 followers. Now, you, I don't think it's overtly English speakers that would follow. People that have a bit of Gaelic would do that. Uh, image, uh, which is Gaelic in video games, has 190 followers. Um, here's the, um, 4,258, there's beauty and lifestyle on that. Then there's uh, slant of our social uh, health and well-being, 983 followers. And all this is in Gaelic with English explanation, usually bits of video of its own TikTok as well. As you would have Gaelic guinea pigs, we do know they understand Gaelic when they speak Gaelic. Um, but, but believe it or not, this is... Um, days in the life of Gaelic guinea pigs. Right? There's eight of them with the, the, the Gaelic names of Hercules, Atlas, Apollo, and Hamish. And so, but what is nice is it's wee bits that's in Gaelic and in English, and you've got 442 people. Well, look at that. Now, I think a lot of the 16 year olds you're, you're talking about, oh, we don't know how to do Gaelic. That's the, the people you find on Instagram and uh, TikTok. Uh, the Cooks Smith, 1,083 followers. Again, as he says, posting in Scottish Gaelic with English subtitles. So there's something happening there. And the last two, Ocean and Lauren, makeup and fashion. And this is really quite clearly, I don't follow it. I, I observe what's happening. But um, 3,486 followers, people tune in regularly. And on TikTok, 500, over five thousand people looking at the wee video she does mostly in Gaelic and you know with bits in the subtitles in English. Have we big wow I mean um seventeen thousand followers the, the, the books and, and and so on. Less Gaelic in there but there's always a bit of Gaelic in it. So what I'm trying to, to say and I'll finish on the, this slide here is that um arts and culture 
are part of the integrated way that I think um, you need if you're building up communities. And, and it can be as local as you want. Policymakers give um, lip service to it. They don't do enough um, in reality for it. Even the studies from the Solskjaer book, I don't think, it just mentions it in passing. It's not there, really. And I think that's an area that everyone who's concerned needs to look at. So it's a story to celebrate Gaelic language and art. And, and the key point for me, people, when you have a choice, when you do Gaelic medium education and you leave school and you have a choice, the language to use, you need a reason to do it. You need a reason. And it's just because, you know, if there's very little opportunities, we need to provide art and cultural opportunities. Uh, as well, so we are seeing it as very uh, limited, and that's my my time up. That's pretty good, I think. Twenty minutes. Um, so uh, Celtic Connect, you know, the, there are acknowledgements of what's what can be done and the impact that it gives, and so on. But we need some way to make it more central. I I think there needs to be a way to make it more central to the analysis. I think that's how you continue to renew the generations while trying to keep the, the richness of the older generations that are there. That's me, so hopefully that was okay. Thank you.